Put your hand in the hand of the man who steal the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. Put your hand in the hand of the man who steal the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Oh yeah. <laughs> Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. It's good to see you. You know what I hate? I hate being taken advantage of, don't you? Don't you just hate people using you, lying to you, manipulating you, taking you for granted, breaking your heart, stabbing you in the back? Me too. Hashtag me too. If you're sick and tired of going through relationship after relationship, next, 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 hoping, when am I gonna find the right one, you know? Is there a right one out there for me? You know, in this giant ocean filled with fish, why do I always get the sharks who just out there to eat me? <laughs> Is there a right one out there for you, you know? So, you know, maybe now you're at the point where you're saying to yourself, forget it, I'm done, no more, no more. I'm just gonna take care of myself, focus on myself, it's too hard to deal with anybody else. You know, I'm going my own way. <laughs> I'm gonna put all those past relationships behind me, throw them in the garbage, take out the trash, and leave it there where they belong. And you know, I'm just gonna worry about myself because, well, we could all understand that, right? But before you do that, before you um, officially sign, seal, and deliver that, you know, a lot of guys these days are going MGTOW. Okay, you, you say, what is MGTOW? You know, MGTOW is just an acronym. M-G-T-O-W stands for men going their own way. Men who identify with this group vary in their beliefs. You know, most of them would agree marriage is a bad idea. It's a raw deal for men these days in the modern world. You know, maybe back... In the 50s, it was a raw deal for the women. Doesn't matter right now, right? At this point in history, men are saying, it's a raw deal for me. Not gonna do it. You know, and many of them will just say, well, romantic relationships with a woman is heavily cautioned, right? Heavily cautioned, you guys. Some even believe, and they go so far as to say, well, any interaction at all with a woman is dangerous. Women are the devil. But ultimately, I think you could, it's fair to say all men in the MGTOW community can agree that each man who identifies as a MGTOW has the freedom to choose to go down his own path. And we all try to help each other out, you know. Other men help other men become aware of the dangers and the pitfalls that exist in relationships like divorce court and 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 child support and alimony and things like this and we understand that you know since for the past 10 years um, re studies have shown that women are cheating on men 40% increase in the last 10 years I think that's what it is okay I think don't quote me on that um, could be fake news. Go do, go do your uh, fact checking on that. But anyway, you know, so how should women respond to this? You know, women are asking questions, you know, because they're seeing a lot of MGTOW videos pop up. A lot of men are going to MGTOW. It's, it's becoming more mainstream. And, you know, they ask me, Sean, why do you identify this group? Is, is it because you hate women? And, you know, I answer, my answer is no. You know, I don't hate women. I love women. You know, I believe personally that women are the most precious gift that God has given to men on this earth, you know. So then the women tell me, oh, so you say you love women, but since you can't get a woman, you make yourself feel better by blaming them. So you don't have to admit that you're a loser, right? You're a reject. Not exactly, right? You see, I've had relationships with women in, before in the past. 
and all of my relationships in the past, they've all failed, you know? They've all ended badly. The woman hurt me. They, she left me. Either I was busted emotionally or financially or both, you know? So the pain that it's caused me had me start to question, you know, what's the problem here? Are men the problem? Are women the problem? And then you got all these MGTOWs, you know? So ultimately, I just want to figure this all out, you know? Because I want to have a healthy relationship with a woman. I want to raise a family. So how does this all work out? And the women will say, Oh, I get it now. You're just a bigger loser than I originally thought. You, you can get a woman, but you can't keep a woman satisfied because you're just a chump. And instead of manning up and improving yourself you just give up altogether because you're just a sore loser to the game and to that i'd say eh, not exactly right i could see why you think that but you see a sore loser is somebody who quits i'm not a quitter i'm a winner the real failure is when you quit trying you see i know the value of a woman i know how much a woman is worth. You know, you, you hear that Alicia Keys song, A Woman's Worth. You know, a woman is worth sacrificing for. A good woman, a virtuous woman, okay? So, like I've told you before, I think women are the most precious gift on earth that God has given to us men. And it takes two people to make a relationship work. You know, if, if one person doesn't know how to make it work, it's not going to work. Okay, it takes two people, but at least, you know, I can figure out how I can make it work, you know, and, and what I need to be doing to make that work and pray and hope that I could find some other woman who knows the same. And I can reach out to her and, and, and assuming she's interested in learning, of course, you say, why am I making this video? Why are you making this video, Sean? You know, because a lot of people out there are hurting, you know, both men and women, you know, especially, you know, with all the failed relationships we have in our society, you know, nobody wins. When a man and a woman come together and they love each other and then they break up, nobody wins in that situation, really. Nobody wins. They both lose. So I want to help encourage you guys and gals, if you're watching, to keep trying, to keep trying to figure out how relationships work and how we're going to make this work. Because if you quit trying, you failed. But that's out of the scope of this video to explain to you exactly how relationships work. That's going to have to be another video. But the point of this message that I want to preach today is just to give you some inspiration to keep trying, okay? Because if you don't quit, you didn't fail. Both men and women are very fragile you know it, it's very emotionally draining when you when you have to go through a breakup or or a divorce man you know that can really take a toll on you emotionally it really can you know and I know from experience you know it, it could drop the strongest um, person the strongest man or woman you need to drop them to their knees where they're just crying and and, and they just want to give up. And, you, you know, they don't know, how do I move on from this? How do I make sense of this relationship? Why did this happen this way? How could I have done things different? How could things have been done different to make it work? And, you know, the worst thing in the world that you can do, do to somebody, especially somebody you're in a close relationship with, is to give up on them. You know, I don't believe in you anymore. You're a monster. I give up on you. Forget you. Get out of here. And what I've come to realize after watching many, many MGTOW videos, you know, I've, I've, I've been a part of the community for a long time. Like, I'd say at least the past five years, okay? And I've seen a lot of different guys, and I've listened to a lot of different philosophies, and, and, and many of them have completely just given up. You know, but that's not me, because I told you I ain't a quitter. I am not going to fail. So, but I know, you. I, I also know the pain of heartbreak. I know what it feels like when you love somebody and they give up on you. And, you know, it's devastating, you know. 
So I can understand why, you know, some men will just choose to quit, you know, just so if nothing else to avoid getting hurt again, right? Because it's painful. It really is. But, but that's the mentality of a coward, you know, to fear getting hurt. So instead of trying to fix the problem, discuss it, figure it out, it's just easier to quit, right? It's just easier to give up on the other person. It's easier to give up on yourself. That's the easy way out. You know, it's the same as somebody who puts a gun in their head and commits suicide, right? Like, it's the coward's way out, you know? Somebody who has lost all faith in themselves, all faith in their partner, somebody who lacks self-esteem to keep going, you don't think that you can figure it out. You lost faith in trying to help the other person. Now, if that's you, I'm sorry. You know, I'm not here to bash you for giving up hope. I'm here to help you and encourage you to keep going. Okay? I'm telling you right now, don't lose your hope. If you're watching this video right now, don't lose your hope. You can believe in yourself. You can do it. You can figure it out. You're not worthless. You're not. You know, if somebody's hurt you and you're in pain, you know, it's hard. I know it's hard to believe me right now. You're going through some pain, but you know, it doesn't mean that they're an evil person, okay? We all mess up. Have you ever heard the saying, those we love the most hurt us the most? You know, that's, that's very true. Excuse me. The reason that is, is because we expect this person that we love the most to never hurt us. That's, that's you know, a common um, belief, you know, that, you know, I love this person. This person loves me and they say they love me, so they're never going to hurt me, right? But you know what? We're all human and eventually we're going to let each other down, you know, in some way, you know? So the problem is instead of helping, helping the other person and trying to understand what they're going through and why they did what they did and and instead of, and instead of embracing them and, and helping them, we get angry that they hurt us, that they did that to us. And, you know, we give up on them and we push them away. You see, men in the MGTOW community have been hurt by women. They've really been hurt, you know. And, and you need to understand that their hurt is very real. It's very real and their hearts are very fragile. Very fragile. Not to say hey, they're a bunch of sensitive men, you know. Uh, these are real men. These are real strong men. These are human beings. And they're just going through a lot of pain. And they're trying to figure out how to navigate all that pain and how to deal with it. And, and if you poke them anymore, if you shame them and, and batter them, and, and you get, or you get angry at them or something, you know, they're going to lash back out at you. They're going to defend themselves. Not because they hate you, but because they're just trying to defend their own... Their own uh, emotional well-being you know they are trying to prevent any more emotional pain being inflicted on them and sometimes you uh how people deal with that is is they have to toughen up and get strong and 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 act like oh i'm gonna defeat you you know and, and get away from me so you know the last thing a person needs when they're in pain is, is more pain okay so that's that's step number one don't give these guys any more pain that's the last thing they need you know but also, you've also heard the saying, the truth hurts. A lot of truth to that. You know, the truth hurts sometimes, you know. You don't go to the doctor when you're in serious pain and, and, and expect him not to tell you the truth. No, you want him to diagnose you and tell you the truth, exactly what's happening and exactly what's going wrong. So that if you want him to, you can say, hey... Will you heal me? What, what do you have to offer me for this pain that I'm in? You know? And if, and if you want to heal, you know, sometimes the doctor's got to take the scalpel. And he's got to cut you up. Right? He's got to cut. I got, I got to cut there the other day. But anyway, he might have to cut you up. So he might have to inflict a little bit more pain, tell you the truth. And inflict a little bit more pain to cut you up so he can heal you, right? But, you know, a doctor's got to be very careful. He doesn't want to create more damage than he needs to to get it to fix you up, right? But emotional damage versus like a physical ailment 
is sometimes a lot harder to diagnose and especially a lot harder to to heal you know it has to be performed by a doctor you know it's got to be performed by somebody who loves you who really cares about you somebody that you can trust but more important than that you know you have to put your trust in this other person and it's sometimes really hard to open up to people and trust them to help you when you've been hurt so much you know it's hard it's hard to do that. It's hard to ask for help from people because you're afraid that if you ask for help, you know, they're going to hurt you more because you have to be a little vulnerable and you've got to tell them and open up emotionally what's going on, you know? It's just like me. I don't like going to the dentist, okay? <laughs> because we can get proud, right? We don't like to admit that, you know... My teeth need to be clean. Who are you to clean my teeth better than me, right? I can clean my teeth myself, right? <laughs> you know, it's not until we realize, oh man, I got a really bad toothache. Then we realize, ouch, help. Something's wrong, help. And then you'll go to the doctor when you're like, I, I didn't do a very good job. I, I, I'm in a lot of pain, please help. But if you're too proud to admit that you need help, your toothache's just going to get worse and worse and worse. So what we have today, we have a lot of men who got a broken heart. Women too, but none of us want to go to the doctor and get healed up. We're too, we're too proud to admit, oh, I'm not hurt. I'm not hurt and I'm going to inflict pain on them. <laughs> That's not going to work, okay? Now, I don't mean everybody's in pain, right? Obviously, but you can look around in our society and, and you can see all the failed relationships going sour, the divorce rate, the breakups, you know? All the heartache, you know, that people go through. And we, we could see that there's a problem. We can all feel it. But I'm here to tell you that there is hope. You know, there is hope. So, so how should women react to MGTOW? You know, let, let me read for you a brief story out of the King James Bible. And I want to read for you the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 14, verse 13. This is a short story, short story. Bible reads, Matthew chapter um, 14, verse 13 through 21. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence to a ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude, and was moved with compassion towards them, and he healed them, or he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, There is a desert place, or this is a desert place, sorry, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the uh, villages and buy themselves victuals. Victuals just means food. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give them something to eat. And they say unto him, We have here five loaves of bread and two fishes. And he said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes and... Looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake, and gave the loaves to his disciples, and his disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up the fragments that remained, twelve baskets full. And they had eaten, and were about five thousand men, beside women and children. Now I'm going to break this story down in, in a minute so we can understand it. Because it's important to make the point that I'm making, how should women react to MGTOW? But first I want to consider the words of Jesus. In a few short chapters back in Matthew, in chapter number 7, I want you to consider the words of Jesus real quick. Jesus says, 
Why beholdest thy why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote of thine own eye, and behold, the beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite! First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again to rend you. <sighs> Jesus said, First, you have to take the beam out of your own eye. A big, huge beam, right? Before you can take the small little moat out of your brother's eye. Let's see if I can get it. <laughs> so, ladies, you know, before you judge the men, the MGTOW men, MGTOW community, you should first humble yourself a little bit. You know, make sure that you're speaking to the men in love, okay? Not in anger, because remember... <clears throat> They're in pain, and they're very fragile. So if you don't use your natural motherly instincts to nurture them, to care for them, and have a mindset that you actually care and want to help them, please don't open your mouth. You know, don't make it worse. You know, that's like <sighs> that's like casting your pearl. Or let me say this, also. Do not cast your pearls before swine. Meaning, don't try to help somebody who doesn't want help. Okay, that'll just make it worse too. Don't try to force your help on somebody. So here we go. Let's break down this story in Matthew chapter um, 14. Where Jesus performs his miracle and feeds 5,000. Uh, we see here, when Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship. Now, let's not word, uh, worry about what he heard of. The, the point is, is he departed thence by ship into a desert place. Okay, so Jesus is going into a desert, basically. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. So there's a great multitude of 5,000 people in the city. And when Jesus leaves the city to go into the desert, they all follow him. Okay. Now, they're all following Jesus into the desert. You know, think about that for a second. It takes faith to follow somebody into the desert, okay? When you're coming out of the big city when, where everything's rich and you got, you, got, you got grocery stores, convenience stores, you got everything you need in the city, right? And if you're going to go out in the desert, you better have a good reason to go out there because it's tough in the desert. There's nothing out there. There's no lights. There's no food. There's, there's nothing out there. So let's continue the story. And, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude. And he was moved with compassion towards them. And he healed their sick. You know, Jesus heals the sick. When you follow Jesus, he will heal you. Sometimes he might take you to a place like the desert that you wouldn't go otherwise, right? But if you go and follow Jesus, even in the, uh, the desert, he'll heal you. You know, this reminds me of my relationship with my woman, you know, the woman that I love. When I decided that I wanted to follow Jesus and, and, and start obeying the commandments and get back into church and and pick up my Bible and start reading my Bible again, you know. It's right about that time where she decided to stay behind in the city, so to speak, right? She wanted to keep living her comfortable life and, she, and keep doing things the way that she had been doing. Whereas, see me, I chose to go into the desert. I chose to, to, to change my life, start cutting things out of my life that were sinful and start incorporating things that were righteous, like the Bible teaches. And, you know, at first it's hard, and it hurts, you know, um, because I was sad. I, you know, I, I just lost, lost the love of my life, this, this woman that I love so dearly. And, you know, I, I was uncomfortable living a different way of life. It, 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 was, it, it, took, it was a challenge, 
You know, just like when you get back into the gym and you first start exercising, you know, you know how your body has to get used to it because because you get sore and it hurts. Well, you know, that's how I felt emotionally. At first, oh, I was really hurt. It was a lot of pain, but you know, after you get over the soreness, you start feeling great, you know? You start getting stronger and and, and you know, but after a while, you know, Jesus heals you. He he cleanses your spirit, forgives you of your sins and you know, the emotional pain eventually completely disappeared. It just completely is completely gone. And and you know, don't get me wrong, the pain of missing my woman is still there. You know, I still love her. I still miss her because she's still a part of me. But being away from her, it still hurts, you know. But the source of my joy has been restored. My heart is happy now. And, you know, I'm really sad she's gone. But, you know, I'm I'm glad I'm with Christ, you know, because he, he, he healed me emotionally. So... Just go back down and watch watch my later video or my earlier video, sorry, um, entitled um, "Healing from Mental Torment." And you'll see that at that point in my life, I was really sad. I was depressed. You know, I was walking into the desert, following Jesus. Um, woman stayed in the city, so to speak, and and but Jesus was there with me in the desert. You know, and He healed my pain and strengthened me. You know, and now I'm like ten times stronger. You know, emotionally because of Him. But let's continue the story. Um, we're on verse 15. So, And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals, which means food. So the disciples here, we see, they're going up to Jesus. And they, and they you know, they notice, hey, it's, it's late outside, you know, the sun's going down. Um, they thought that, you know, hey, if the multitudes stay out here, they're going to be hungry, you know, they're, um, they're going to be really hungry, they're going to be starving by the time, you know, we, where are we going, we don't, so, you know, they told Jesus, hey, Jesus, you know, all these people that are following you, these 5,000 people, you know, tell them to go back so that they can get food, you know, because the, that's the way our brains work, right? Is that we think logically. We try to make sense of reality. The world that we live in. And and, and how, how are 5,000 people in the middle of the desert going to be taken care of you know, with their food? You know? So it's understandable why they would ask Jesus such a thing. Let's continue. Verse 16. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye, the, uh, give ye them to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the disciples scratching their head, right? Like, how in the world? How in the world? This they must have thought Jesus, you're nuts, Jesus. You know, about the only thing that they probably thought Jesus wasn't a complete nutcase is like, oh well, at least he agrees that they're gonna get hungry, that they need to eat, right? But but how are we gonna feed them? <laughs> you know, we're out in the middle of the desert. How are we gonna feed all these people, Jesus? There are five thousand people. We don't make food for five thousand. Verse 17, and they said unto him, the disciples, so they reply back to Jesus. We have here five loaves and two fishes. Okay, so they have five loaves of bread and two fishes. Okay, even if you had a big, huge fish, like a big old fish. <laughs> but I don't know, how. why would they be carrying a big, giant fish in the middle? <laughs> anyway, somehow they had two fishes, right? How are we supposed to feed all these people? I mean, they must have been scratching their head like, Jesus, you, okay, you told us to feed them. How are we going to do this? And you know what Jesus said? Let's see what Jesus said in verse 18. He said, bring them hither to me. So he, he give me those five loaves and those two fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes and looked up to heaven and blessed. And he brake and he gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. Wow. Not only that, they took up the fragments that remained. Twelve baskets 
full of food. He fed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fishes. Amazing. Amazing. How amazing is that? <laughs> Imagine all the people that saw that. Imagine if you were there, you know, and, and they went back to the city and they told all their friends and their relatives about it, right? You're never going to believe this. It was a miracle. We were in the desert. There was nothing there. And Jesus fed all of us with only two fishes and five loaves of bread. Ha! He just multiplied it so he can feed all of us. We all ate till our heart's content. And I'm sure that bread was the most delicious bread. It was probably like fresh, tasty bread. The most tasty fish. Amazing. And you know, I'm sure that when they got back and they told their family and friends about it, some of the people probably said, no way, never happened, never happened. You're lying, I don't believe it. And then I'm sure other people thought to themselves, Man, I should have went, man. I knew I should have went. You know, if I was with you, I could have seen it for myself. I could have experienced that. I could have tasted the bread that Jesus miraculously, out of thin air, just multiplied there in the middle of the desert. Wow. And you say, what's the point of this message, Sean? How does this relate to how women should uh, deal with MGTOW? Look, the point is... Jesus can take a little bit and turn it into more than you ever thought possible, okay? If you think that you wasted time in your past relationships, if you think that you've been used in the past, abused in the past, you know, and if you're hanging on to this last bit of emotion that you have left and saying, no, I'm not going to give it away to anybody, it might hurt me. And you stay in the city and you hold on to it and you don't follow Jesus into the desert, if you don't have the faith to trust Him, to trust God, you're not going to get healed. You're not going to see the healing. And you're definitely not going to see the miracle of Him taking what little bit you have left and multiplying it to the world of what you have to offer. You know, you have something to offer. You're special. You're a great human being. You know that? You know, many people think, me? Oh, me? Nah, I'm too old, man. I've already peaked. You know, it's all downhill for, for me now. Or, or maybe you think, Sean, I'm too old to have kids, you know? Kids, I don't have enough money to have kids. <laughs> or, or, or maybe you think, I can't go back to my ex. You know, it's, it's ruined. I ruined all that already. It's over. You know, friends, let me tell you something. God is so powerful that he can take your situation right now, whatever situation you're in, wherever you're at, even if you think and you logically think in your head, you know, I've got too little to offer. I have nothing to offer. I have no love left off to offer me. Whatever little bit you have, if you take it to Jesus, you give whatever you have to him, he'll not only heal you, he'll multiply, he'll perform a miracle. And he'll give you more than you could have ever dreamed of. Your basket will end up being overflowed. You know, look, the point of my video is this. You know, there is hope for relationships, okay? But without the spiritual healer, without Jesus Christ, you're going to stay stuck in the mud where you're at right now. So, you know, really, what do you have to lose? Nothing else has worked. Why not try following Jesus? Why not follow him into the desert? If you're not going to follow him, you know, unless you believe that he can perform miracles, you're not going to go into that desert, right? So I'm telling you guys and gals who are watching this video, you know, you, you can take a look at my, my history and my videos and you can watch how he healed me, how Jesus Christ healed me. I'll testify to it right now. I followed him into the desert. I followed the teachings of him in this book. And I'm still following him. And I'm telling you guys right now, I went through the desert with him. He healed me. And now my cup's overflowing. You know, I can't put video videos out fast enough for you guys. All the, all the things that he's teaching me. You know, my baskets are overflowing just like the fish 
and the loaves were overflowing in the in, in this story in the Bible. You know, look, how should women react to MGTOW? Well, first, you need to realize that men are in pain, and you need to respond with love. But, you know, it's impossible to respond with love if you're in pain, too. If you're too busy focused on your own pain. You need to realize trying to love somebody while you're in pain, that's not going to work. You say, Sean, you don't understand, man. I'm really hurt. I can't trust people anymore, you know. It's too dangerous out there, man. Listen, I understand what you're going through. I do. I was there. So why are you trusting in people, you know? Why are you trusting in yourself? Why are you hanging on to that emo that last bit of emotion you have? Put give it to God. Give it to Jesus. And when you see these MGTOW videos, you'll see somebody who's in need of love. You'll see somebody who's in need of a spiritual healer. And you can tell them about Jesus. You can tell them how he healed you. How you followed him into the desert. And he healed you up. And I promise you, once they experience that too, once, and, and once they experience the love that you show them too, Jesus will perform a miracle. You know, he can bring people back together. He can heal relationships. That's what he does. He's God. And and I promise you the person that that you talk to, the person that you can get to go with you in the desert. They're going to thank you. They're going to thank you so much. You know, and, and if they mock you and tell you, "No way, I'm not going to the desert. That Jesus, he has no power. He can't help me." Well, yeah, at least you did the right thing by pointing them in the right direction. And, and you can pray and hope that they choose to go that way one day. But I'll tell you something. Don't give up on them. Don't quit just because they mock you and they shake their fist at you and tell you you're an idiot. Don't give up on them. Never give up because the only way, way you can fail is to give up. Quit trying. Anyway, that's my message. I hope it reached you well, and I hope you learned something, at least a little bit of something on how one possible way you can deal and react to these MGTOW videos. Anyways, as usual, <laughs> I'm going to give God the last word on this. But, you know, I, I do want to remind you, I, I do want to remind you that uh, when all else has failed, when you think, no way, that's impossible, just remember, with all things, or with God, all things are possible. With our own power, we can't do it. But with God, the healer, our spiritual healer, Jesus Christ, all things are possible. I promise you, I'm a living testament. Now, I love you all, and I'll see you soon on the next video. God bless. I'm going to read from the book of Psalms. Psalm 30. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up, and hast not made my foes to rejoice against me. O oh Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O oh Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, and, and I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto, thee, sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. Give thanks in remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but for a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide my face, and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made my supplication. 
What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare the truth, thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. And thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness to the end, that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord, I will give thanks unto thee forever and ever. Para siempre. Amen.